Hi, my name's Paul Grogan, and in this Gaming Rules video, I'm going to be giving you an overview of the rules for Pillars of Eternity, Lords of the Eastern Reach. In the game, two to four players will spend resources to recruit troops and heroes, which can then go adventuring to fight fiendish monsters and find treasure, or be used to attack the other players. Resources can also be used to construct buildings, which give special abilities and are worth points at the end of the game. The game is divided into rounds, with each player taking a turn clockwise around the table. After all players have taken a turn, the event die is rolled and then a new round begins. Each player's turn is divided into five steps. Combat, where the player may go adventuring or attack another player. Draw resources, where resource counters are drawn out of the bag. Build and hire, where resources are spent to recruit troops, heroes and construct buildings. Discard, where the active player may discard any number of cards from their hand and draw cards, where all players refill their hands with new cards. This process continues until the end of a round in which the deck of city cards runs out. Then the victory points are totaled and the player with the most wins the game. Let's look in more detail at the various steps in a player's turn, and although combat is the first step, I'm actually going to describe how you get cards into play first. In the draw resources step, five resources are drawn at random from the bag. These are then used to play cards from your hand, paying the cost shown on the card. The housing limit shows how many building cards you may have in play, and the food limit shows how many army cards you may have in play. These limits can be increased by certain cards such as the farm. After you have played as many cards as you want, any remaining resources are passed clockwise to the next player, who may then use them to build and hire cards from their own hand. This process continues until all players have had a chance to play cards or there are no more resources left. In the first step of the turn, you may send your troops and heroes on a dangerous adventure. To do this, form a party and then draw the top card from the dungeon deck of your choice. Deeper levels contain more dangerous monsters but have greater rewards. If a treasure card is drawn, keep drawing more cards until a monster is revealed and if that monster has the random encounter keyword, draw another card. Your party must now fight all revealed monsters by comparing attack and defence values. Total the party's attack value and assign it between the monsters however you like. To kill a monster, you need to assign an amount of attack equal to the monster's defence. In this example, your party has a total attack of 7, which is not enough to defeat both of the monsters. But let's say you also control a blacksmith which you may use once per turn to add one attack, giving you the eight needed to be victorious. The monsters, however, don't give up without a fight. You must suffer losses based on their total attack value, in this case four. This means that at the moment, your entire party is going to get wiped out. Luckily, you also have a wall, which can be used to add three to the defense of the archers, meaning that they are killed, but no more damage remains. Poor archers. Defeated monsters are placed in your trophy pile and are worth victory points at the end of the game. And if you defeat all of the monsters, you may pick up any treasure. In each of the three adventure decks, at least one of the monsters is a boss. Not only is this a tougher monster, but if not defeated, it stays in play rather than being discarded. Bosses have an effect on the game when in play, and any player that goes adventuring must encounter the boss instead of drawing cards from the deck. Instead of going on an adventure, you may form a party to attack one of your opponents. The other player decides which of his armies will defend. Both sides must then suffer losses based on the total attack values. In this example, your opponent's attack value is 1, so you must discard either the Archers or Kanarua. Let's assume you choose the Archers. Your attack value is 5, and the Defender chooses to lose the Guards. If you have any attack points remaining, the Defender must choose Buildings to meet the losses. Continuing the example, you had 3 attack points left, so the Defender should select the Tower to be pillaged. Note that if he had chosen the Blacksmith instead, this would not have been enough to meet the losses required so you would have had to lose the tower as well. Pillaged buildings are placed in your trophy pile and are worth points at the end of the game. Defeating some monsters can earn you soul gems, which can be placed on certain cards to increase their abilities. 
Archers, for example, gain the ambush ability once they have a soul gem, which means they deal damage first in combat. Mordus gains the ability to pillage a building by sacrificing himself, and the Paladin gains increased attack. I hope you found this video useful in giving you an overview of the basics of Lords of the Eastern Reach. For more information, please check out the website. Take care, and thanks for watching.